Hi everybody, my name is Kaspar van Lissa. I am the lead author of a workflow for open reproducible code in science, aka WORKS. WORKS is designed to really cut down the learning curve for adopting open science principles and to show you just how easy it is to start an open science research project using WORKS, I am going to give you a full tutorial as I finish this cup of coffee. Let's go. Our journey is going to start here on my GitHub profile. Every time I start a new works project, I'm going to create a new project on GitHub first. I don't want to use any repository template and I'm going to give it a name, in this case, works demo. Um, and I don't have to add a description. I'll keep it public and I will just create the repository. So now GitHub is going to give me a URL that starts with HTTPS and ends with .git. I'm going to copy that to my clipboard and then I go to our studio. In our studio, I'm going to click the button to create a new project. So when the pop-up window appears, I will select new directory and I scroll down to find the works project template. I will name the directory on my computer works demo as well, but you can choose any name. And I will paste the Git remote repository address from my clipboard. This is the address that I just got from GitHub. I'm going to use rnv, which is essential for dependency management. I would like an APA6 manuscript, and I'm going to use a pre-registration template by my friend and colleague Anna van het Veer and I will use a CC BY attribution license. So my project is licensed and people can use it. And I would like to open this in a new session. Now what we note is that I get some status messages over here. It's initializing the Git repository, writing a works file, and doing basically all of the essential housekeeping for a works project. When your project opens, you are greeted with four windows. The first is a readme document, which will be the landing page for anybody who visits your project on GitHub. The second is a draft manuscript, and this draft manuscript is created by the package Papaya, which is used to create APA-style manuscripts. The third one is a pre-registration draft. You can flesh out this pre-registration with the plans for your own study. And the fourth document is a prepareData.r script. This script is used to conduct any pre-processing steps that you need to apply to your data before you can share your data publicly. Ideally, the only thing you would do in this document is to pseudonymize your data and then share your data publicly. Or if your data are very privacy sensitive, you would pseudonymize the data and then share a synthetic version of the data. All of this is done automatically using the open data or closed data functions in works. But let's go through the steps of the workflow one by one. We start with preparing a pre-registration. I'm not going to change anything about the document itself. I'm just going to knit it to PDF to show you the kind of nice layout uh, that you're going to get. Here is the pre-registration rendered to PDF. And if we want, we could upload this PDF to a platform like aspredicted.org or the openscienceframework.io. Um, but actually the definition of a pre-registration is an indelible public record of the plans for your study. And if we just publish these pre-registration plans to GitHub, that serves as an indelible record. So let's do that now. What I'm going to do is use a works function called git update and git update performs three steps uh, for the git protocol it adds all of the changed files to your repository commits them with a message and pushes them to github so all i have to do now is specify a message and the method message that i'm going to specify is wrote the pre-registration and then we see a bunch of status update messages as uh, works is adding these changes to the repository and synchronizing it with the remote repository on GitHub. So we see that all of the changed files have disappeared from the uh, Git panel in our studio. And if we go to uh, the GitHub page, we can refresh it. And we will see that many files have been added with the status message wrote the pre-registration. 
Now what we recommend in the works paper is to tag this pre-registration as a release. In order to do that, we go to tags on GitHub and then we go to releases and then we say create a new release and we'll just call it pre-registration and we'll give it a title pre-registration and we'll describe it this is a pre-registration and we can publish the release now the great thing about this is that we made a snapshot freezing all of the files in time and making it easy for other people to find this state of the project back and this way we can always prove that at this point in time we had the plans for our study ready to go and from there on out we followed through with the pre-registered plans so let's go back to works in our studio so now my pre-registration is done i'm going to close that file and now i'm going to collect some data because this is just a demo tutorial i'm going to use some default data included with r namely the iris data set we can have a look at the data here we see that these are um, i think five columns of data about properties of flowers but we're going to treat this as highly privacy sensitive data because they are so privacy sensitive i cannot share these data publicly if i did want to share them publicly i would at this point say open data iris and by executing this command the iris data set would be added to my github repository but i'm not going to do that instead i'm going to say closed data and this is going to do several things first it's going to save the iris data to a spreadsheet on my local computer second it's going to create a synthetic version of the data that can be publicly shared because they are fake data with similar properties to the original and third it's going to store a unique identifying number for this data set so that people can always verify the integrity of the data on my local computer so let's run this now now if we look at the git panel we see that several files have been added and i'm ready to commit all of those files i will also save the prepare data script which is then added to the list and again i will use git update added my data to synchronize all of this with github if we go to github and we update it then we see that indeed the data and the codebook were added and the nice thing about github is that it renders this codebook as a html page so visitors can see immediately what the structure of our data looks like thereby getting an idea of the project that we're running we get this nice table created by works and a legend below so this is also good for people to gain access to our project and understand how it works i want to point out one more thing which is that on the public repository the only thing that is shared is a synthetic data file highlighted here but if i look at my local repository there i have both the original data and a synthetic data file now i'm ready to start writing my manuscript again i won't change anything about the default template because this is a bare bones tutorial i just want to show you what happens when i load this data and start performing my analyses we already see a message for the user here which says we recommend that you prepare your raw data in preparedata.r we did that and then we recommend to uncomment the line below to load the original or synthetic data, whichever is available. So we select this line and uncomment it. What happens when we execute the code? Well, the original data are loaded from data.csv. And if we look in the environment, we see that indeed the original data have been loaded into an object called data. So from here on, we can perform analyses on these data and we can write our results section we can write the whole paper if we want um, we also see some other text we see for example this manuscript uses the workflow for open reproducible code in science with a reference 
And then later we see an example of a non-essential citation. Non-essential citations are useful if you want to keep a record of all of the references you've used, but perhaps for publication in a old-fashioned print journal, you have to cut down your reference list just by changing the knit function here from cite all to cite essential. You can cut all of the non-essential references from your paper. All right, let's do a little bit of analysis. We're gonna keep it super simple. Um, in this case, we're going to go down here to the results and we're gonna add a block of our code. In that block of our code, we are going to um, create a plot of data dollar sign sepal length against data dollar sign sepal width. They're probably gonna be correlated. Not so much actually. But still, it's a nice example of a plot. We can give the plot a name, like fig1. And we can give it a caption, and then we can say, please look at figure like this. So let's have a look what happens when we knit this document. We render it to PDF. Here is the finished result. I will enlarge it so you can see it properly. So if we scroll down, we see a beautifully formatted APA style paper. Of course, the content are just the contents that are included with the template. Here's a nice example. And we see the manuscript uses the workflow for open reproducible code in science. And here is the reference to my paper. But then it just said, this is an example of a non-essential citation and the reference has been removed because we used the knit function cite essential. Okay, we go down to the results. It says, please look at figure one. And then as per APA style, the figure has been placed at the bottom of the manuscript. There we see figure one, our first figure, and it's a figure that we created in the text. Here are our references nicely formatted. I have to say, for the purposes of this tutorial, this document looks pretty much ready for submission to a journal. <laughs> so I will save the manuscript and I will commit all of the changes to the Git repository. Again, I will use Git update and I will write finished manuscript we see that things are synchronized with the GitHub repository and voila. So at this point, I could submit my manuscript to a journal. Note that in the manuscript folder, a manuscript.pdf has been generated. This you could submit to a journal. There's also a LaTeX file with the extension .tech. For some journals, you can submit that. So what still remains to be done? Well, what we still need to do is to snapshot our dependencies. For that, we will use rnv snapshot. And this basically um, maintains a record of all of the packages we used and their versions and their origins so that other users have access to the exact same software that we used to do these analyses. Now, thankfully, the log file in this case is already up to date. Um, so what else remains to be done? Well, it would be nice to get a badge for uh, living up to all of these open science practices. And for that, we can use works badge. So we get a green check mark for some of these standards and we get a red check mark for others. There are more comprehensive standards that cannot be automatically checked, but we can check them manually by editing the checklist.csv spreadsheet. Um, now we see that the README has been updated to include this badge and we're going to git update to get that on the GitHub repository. And we're going to just say add badge. And if we now look at the GitHub page again, we can see that indeed a works badge has been added to the project. In this case, we get an orange badge, which means that we live up to the work standards to a limited extent and there's still room for improvement. This is beyond the scope of the tutorial, however. Just to wrap things up, for the sake of this tutorial, we'll call it a finished research project. And now other people will be able to reproduce our code by either downloading a zip 
of the entire repository to their local computer, or for example, forking the repository, which means they create a copy on their GitHub account and they can make changes as they see fit. People can send us pull requests with suggested changes to the text of the manuscript or the analysis code itself. People can open issues if they think they've detected a mistake or an error. And this way we invite interaction with other knowledgeable researchers uh, through GitHub. And that's the social media aspect of this platform. All right, with that, I would like to conclude this tutorial. Uh, I hope you apply works to your own research projects. I'm out of coffee and I had a second cup in the meanwhile as well. Uh, I hope you enjoy our software and good luck to you in your research.